one of our subscriber got a chance to attend the hexaver interview in which he got selected in this video i am going to share the interview questions shared by him so stay tuned till the very end hey everybody this is your friend jib let's get started after this short intro do you know what is the use of for each method in java 8 for each method yeah see this for each is here. the same the nns uh, loop okay the same concept of the nns loop is used to for iterating the values list of values we can use the for each loop what about and what is the use of lambda lambda can in our java well, with help of lambda we no need to write any method name we can directly call the lambda functionality in our code by writing any method name or anything Lambda is an uh, it's a short block. We can say it's a block right which contains parameter or return type. A lambda expresses uh, sim, it's the same like a method, but no need to write any method name. It's just implemented by write of the body or Java code. Then okay. it's enable the uh, treat functionality as a method argument or code as a data. Then a uh, fun function is, is created without the belong any class or something. Then lambda can pass around if an object or an executive one at anywhere, we can say. And what are the other features you use Java 8 while coding? We have used uh, lambda function and uh, default methods in your interfaces and then uh, method references and then uh, mainly we use the stream. Yeah, these are the basic things we are used as part of Java 8. We also used uh, Enhanced Script Check. I think in Java 11 or something, uh, Java 11 or Java 13, I don't remember. There is a something called Enhanced Statement where you can use uh, Lambda expression. Enhanced for function. loop, you mean? Enhanced for loop, even you have Enhanced Switch Statement. You can write, usually you have switch case and then you have the statements and then break statement. Yeah. But in the in the case of Enhanced Switch, uh, you can directly write in one line statement like case, string, colon, you write your uh, lambda function, arrow mark function, and then you write your expression. That's it. That kind of case statement we have used it. How garbage collection works internally? Garbage collection actually in the uh, memory, right? There are uh, there are various blocks available. Like uh, when the particular objects gets created, so it first goes to young generation. Young generation then after uh, after some specified time, it once the young generation blocks get filled completely, then it moves to the old generation. So like that, and when uh, the reference in, in particular object has um, uh, has no reference, so garbage collect collector will get uh, invoked and it will uh, release. Uh, means it will uh, release all those objects which don't have any reference to them. Can you tell me what are the different Spring annotations you have used in your project? Uh, in a Spring Boot, I have used the uh, application uh, for instance rest con at the rest rest controller. Second is an uh, at the rate rest controller, at the rate controller, at the request mapping, at the rate component, uh, at the rate bin, then at the rate configuration to configure the right, uh, then all these annotations I have used, at the rate auto wire, at the rate path variable, yeah, path variable. Right. Suppose you have some other services as well which you don't have access. So, how you are testing the like output or uh, anything from that? Are you mocking? Yes, we are mocking. Which framework you are using for that? Mockito. Mockito, okay. Have you heard about string builder, string buffer? String buffer and uh, string builder, those are the mutable objects, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, those will perform the same operation size like a uh, string, but uh, so performance wise, uh, there will be a difference between the both uh, string and uh, string buffers. Yeah, so these are uh, mutable, but there is one more difference between them, between string buffer and string builder. So, in terms Sorry, of no. synchronization, Oh, okay. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, so okay. string string will be asynchronous. asynchronous. No, no. Those will be asynchronous. Yeah. Sorry. So S between string buffer, one is synchronized and one is uh, unsynchronized. Asynchronous. Okay, okay, okay. So which one is synchronized in string builder and in string buffer? Between string builder and string buffer. So I think a sing string buffer is the synchronized. Yeah. Yes, yes. String buffer is the okay. synchronized one. And string builder okay. is asynchronous. Is it safe to iterate over a error list while removing its element at the same time? You will get a concurrency exception, I believe. There is one concurrent uh, access exception. So. Any use of Apache, Kafka, or any other uh, messaging queue? Uh, so uh, I'm aware about Kafka. We are using it. In the Apache Kafka, currently for microservice, we are using it. 
there was an earlier poc which was happened on rapid mq and kafka why kafka was being preferred more because the when it is basically it runs on publisher subscriber module but one reason we have considered is that because kafka retains the message for some time and since it is retaining the message it gives you leverage to your uh, your customer or consumer who want to uh, have that data after some time they can pull it and they can access it from there and basically to put the data into the kafka we can from the rest services we can or the mock services are there which can push the data to the kafka and we can use it so basically kafka is for basically exchanging the messages between the two application and this is this is the one thing which gives an advantage when you have multi language application like we can have dotnet java and which both can access your data from the server which is a messaging queue engine available 